We just had another earthquake on the new Madrid fault. This was a magnitude 3.7 earthquake just north of Memphis. Memphis, as we know, is right on the Mississippi River, as we see here. It's uh, just north of that. It's on uh, the right side of the river at Dyersburg. And uh, as far as the mileage is concerned, it's about, let's see, about 68 miles north of Memphis. This is clearly on the New Madrid Fault Zone, and uh, it's been having some activity these past few days. Uh, I've marked some of the quakes that we recently had, as you can see here. Well, we usually pay attention to what's happening on the west coast in, in uh, Yellowstone because of the quake activity there, but these here are uh, an uptick from what we see, and it's very significant because of the fact that it's on the New Madrid Fault, which is uh, expecting to be hazardous. Uh, economic and human vulnerability, earthquake hazards near the New Madrid Fault Zone, a long-established weakness in the Earth's crust, in the central and eastern United States. These earthquakes here have occurred for hundreds of millions of years. In 1811 and 12, three large earthquakes, magnitude up to 7.5, caused severe damage in this area. At the time, the region was very sparsely populated, but today it's a critical economic hub centered around Memphis, Tennessee, with a unique confluence of transportation, distribution centers, and small earthquakes still occur regularly and large earthquakes will occur here into the future to affect all parts of at least 15 states in the central and the US. The region has long history of large earthquakes with magnitude seven or greater occurring roughly every 500 years. Magnitude five to six earthquakes have been happening of course much more frequently. The largest earthquakes in the new Madrid fault zone occur in series three to five large earthquakes within a few months, and then thousands of smaller aftershocks to continue for months or years, and the pattern of several large earthquakes was seen in 1811 and 12, New Madrid earthquakes, as well as around 1450 AD and 900 AD and about 2300 BC. Here's again the map of it. This is Memphis right here, and this is where we had our earthquake today, right here, Dyersburg, about uh, 70 miles north on the Mississippi River, as you can see. All this is here, and you can see the stress on the, uh, the aerial map, the terrain, you can see the strain there. This is all along the Mississippi River, as we can see. Um, these quakes, Expect a shaking intensity of magnitude 7.5 earthquakes in the New Madrid Central Fall. Greens to yellows indicate moderate shaking. Orange to reds indicate severe, as you can see here in the middle. Shaking to moderate to heavy damage. Building is infrastructure. As we can see, this area here is, uh, let's know, let's go to the uh, that was an older Arkansas quake in the same area. This is it right here. And let's go to the regional information because I would say venture to say that half of the United States lives just east of the Mississippi. Half of the United, half, uh, half of the population that is uh, lives around this area of the country. And uh, going back to the details of it, the shaking, the regional information. Let's go back to this. Okay, that's what we had just a little while ago. Dyersburg is where we had it today. The uh, tectonic summary, earthquakes in the New Madrid seismic zone. 
around Missouri, the river and adjacent states is the most active, seismically active in North America, east of the Rockies. As we said, during the winter of 1811 to 12, three very large quakes devastated the area, were felt through most of the nation. They occurred a few weeks apart. They were December 16, January 23rd and February 7, and they had hundreds of aftershocks, some severely damaging by themselves for years on end. Prehistoric earthquakes, as we said, in the 1400s, around 900 AD, strong damage earthquakes struck the southwestern end of the seismic zone near Marked Tree, Arkansas, with a magnitude 6.3, and the northeastern end near Charleston, Missouri, 6.6 .6 magnitude in 1895. Since 1900, moderate damage earthquakes have struck the seismic zone every few decades. About twice a year, people still feel smaller quakes that do no, not cause damage. Earthquakes in the central and eastern United States typically felt over a much broader region than the western U.S. east of the Rockies. An earthquake can be felt over an area as, as much as 10 miles, 10 times larger than a similar magnitude earthquake on the west coast. A magnitude 4 eastern U.S. earthquake typically can be felt at many places as far as 60 miles from where it occurred and it infrequently causes damage near its source. A magnitude 5.5 eastern U.S. earthquake usually can be felt as far as 300 miles from where it occurred, sometimes causing damage as far as 25 miles away. The faults. Earthquakes everywhere occur on faults within bedrock usually miles deep. Earthquakes of the New Madrid seismic zone occur within a large network of faults called the Real Foot Rift. The rift formed about 500 million years ago when this region was stretched in the northwest-southeast direction. Along a northeast-southwest zone at least 40 miles wide and 300 miles long, the rocks in the rift were slowly dropped down about one mile along some of the faults. But now the region is undergoing east-west shortening and the ancient faults of the real foot rift are being reactivated to generate earthquakes. Today the real foot rift and the New Madrid seismic zone are 1,200 miles from the nearest plate boundary which is in the Caribbean Sea. The network of faults in the seismic zone is buried beneath hundreds of thousands of feet of sand and mud. Four of the largest faults are recognized as alignments of abundant small earthquakes and movements along two of these faults dammed rivers and created lakes during the earthquakes of 1811 and 12. A few more deeply buried faults were detected during oil and gas exploration and a few small faults are known from geographic mapping. But the earthquakes, many of them occur away from the few known faults. There must be additional unknown faults that can generate earthquakes in the seismic zone. So they have not found all of them yet, obviously, that's bad news. According to the best overall guide to seismic hazard in New Madrid uh, seismic zone is the earthquakes themselves. Now let's go to the smaller one, the smaller earthquake that we had today. Ave 2.5, where is that? Here. This, this here, let's go to the details of it. Sorry, here, let's go to the details of that. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. I just saw it before. I thought it was a mine. Yeah, that's it. It's a mine collapse. So that, that quake was caused by the mine collapse. But um, it's right along that area. Uh, let me see what time that was. Uh, let me see. This was at 10.36, and the other one was at uh, a couple of hours later, at right after lunchtime today. Yeah. So that was the mine collapse. However, we do have the... That's not it. Sorry. That's the mine collapse. Okay, the regional information. The tectonic summary, as we said, this is the same uh, as we've had before. The um, New Madrid seismic zone centered on southeastern Missouri, 
seismic zone of eastern Quebec in New England and New York, Philadelphia, Wilmington, urban corridor and elsewhere. Air. However, most of the enormous region from the Rockies to the Atlantic can go years without an earthquake large enough to be felt, and several U.S. states have never reported a damage during the damaging earthquake. As we said, earthquakes east of the Rockies, although less frequent than the west, are felt over a much broader region than the uh, similar magnitude in the west coast. An earthquake can be felt over an area more than 10 times larger than a similar magnitude earthquake on the west coast, as we read before. Induced seismicity, as in the case elsewhere, there is evidence that some central and eastern North American earthquakes have been triggered caused by human activities that have altered the stress conditions in Earth's crust sufficiently to induce faulting. Activities that have induced felt earthquakes in some environments have uh, included, of course, impoundment of water behind dams, injecting of fluid into the Earth's crust. We're talking about uh, fra hydraulic fracturing here. Extraction of fluid or gas and removal of rock in mining or quarrying operations. In much of the eastern, central, North America, a number of earthquakes suspected of having been induced is much smaller than the number of natural earthquakes, but in some regions, such as the south central United States, a significant majority of recent earthquakes are thought by many seismologists to have been man-made. Even within the area with many human-induced earthquakes, the activity that seems to be induced seismically at one location may be taking place at many other locations without inducing, uh, inducing felt earthquakes. Okay, so the smaller one today was the um, mine collapse. So the unfortunate thing is that we have uh, quite a lot of activity in this area, which has to do with the New Madrid Fault. And we've even had an uptick in, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, you know, earthquakes around, along Canada. And, uh, you know, the... Uh, uh, eastern seaboard, northeastern seaboard there. So uh, we'll keep an eye out on that and see what happens. And we'll take a look later on at what's happening on the West Coast and, of course, continue with Yellowstone. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.